Okay, guys, um, <clears throat> here we go again. Again, sorry, without the webcam uh, today, but let's uh, let's go for it. Uh, this is the last. Um, so just before I start, you, you can, might even be able to hear the torrential rain outside. Uh, so if you do hear that, apologies. I'll just try and talk a little bit louder, uh, and hopefully the rain calms down. Um, okay, so regions in the Argon diagram. This is the last bit of chapter two. Okay, and it's going to really tie in all the work that we've done so far on circles, um, perpendicular bisectors, um, and half lines. So it's going to be really good practice for all of that. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to use the examples from the book, which is on page 36. So you might want to have this um, referred to you as well. If you go to page 36 in the bottom there. Okay, it says on a separate argon diagram, shade the regions represented by, and we'll we'll go one by one. Z minus or minus two i. This this is another use of uh, complex numbers. It's a different way of of shading regions. Okay. Right now, before we start, we need to really draw the the line or the locus of points that is represented by that, if we make it equals rather than a, a less than or equal to. Uh, and from previous uh, notes and exercises, you should, re you should recognize that that is gonna be a circle, okay? So that's gonna be a circle, and also we need to rewrite it in a form which is the general form, which is that, we make that whole thing negative there, okay? Uh, and that will be a circle of uh, center for two from there um, and a radius of two. Okay. Right now I can go in and draw that immediately on the Argon diagram. So real axis, imaginary. Okay, it's a uh, four two, four. To I, there's the center, and the circle um, will be like that. Okay, so that is the region of uh, that's that's if it was equal to. Now, if it's less than or e if if it's less than or equal to do, this means the radius is less than or equal to two. Okay, so if the radius at the moment the radius is two. But if it's less than or equal to two, then the, the area or the, the region that it could be, well, it could be any region in that area there, okay? So that would be the, um, that would be the region. It's a solid line because it can include the out, it can include the circle itself. If it was just less than, it would be a dotted line. Okay, so that's the first one. Right, second one, um, which is this. Z minus four is uh, less than Z minus six okay, in the modulus. Again, uh, we we rewrite it as equal to first. Um, okay, and from previous uh, uh, examples and videos, you should spot that this is the this is going to be the perpendicular bisector. Okay. So that is definitely a perpendicular bisector, and the two points are whatever this point is. So that is going to be between four, um, is it four zero, because there's no imaginary part, and uh, six zero. Okay, so it's the perpendicular bisector between those two points. So if we draw that on, um, it's going to be between four and six, and, and and if it's the perpendicular bisector of that. Then it will simply just be the uh, straight line. Um, it will basically be x equals five, and I'm going to do a dotted line because uh, it's just less than. It's just less than, uh, so it's going to be um, there. Now I just need to now decide which side of the um, line I need to shade that would uh, satisfy that point, that um, in a, that sort of inequality there. And actually, it's going to be more. It's going to be towards the four it's going to be on this side okay and i'll show you why in a minute if i put any point i want and I'm, you can choose i point either side for this if i pick zero zero just choose a point let's say let z equal zero 
plus zero i, which is effectively zero zero, isn't it? Now, zero z to four. Well, the distance there, because modulus is distance, that distance there is going to be four, and is four less than sorry. Uh, yeah, it's going to be negative 4 in modulus and is less than distance from there to there, which is 6. And that's true, isn't it? 4 is less than 6. Modulus is get rid of the negative sign. So I know that it's on the left-hand side there. Okay. Right. Um, third type. This is good practice because this is reviewing all the different types of locus that can be formed on Arden diagrams, is when you have something like this. Um, okay. Okay, so we're shading this region here. Um, and um, because it's a double region, I'm going to break it up into two separate parts. So I'm actually going to break it up into this part first. Zero equals arg. And I remember I need to rewrite this to get it minus, a bit like the circle. I need to make sure that I've written it in the correct form. Okay. And uh, the other line I'm going to draw in is, is when it's... Um, I over 4 equal to arg z and again just make sure I rewrite it in the correct general form which is always minus the whole thing okay you should also spot that this is a half line which means it's basically a line starting from a point and the point it's starting from is uh, 2 2 it starts from 2 2 starts from 2 2 and it goes at either that angle or that arc. These are, this is the argument, which basically gives you the angle needed. Okay. So if I draw that on an argon diagram again, again, imaginary, real, it starts at the point 2, 2, 2, 2. And the e when the argument's equal to 0, again, I've got to be, it's equal to a solid line. That would be my line. I can draw that in solidly. And when the other, that's that one done. If I was to pi over 4, well, pi over 4 is about, it's about that sort of angle. That angle there needs to be pi over 4. And again, I'm drawing it solidly because the inequality has a less than or equal to sign there. And basically, it's any of the z values that have an argument between those two points. So you can probably predict here, I'm just going to shade this region. It's all the arguments between 0, which was on the line itself and pi over 4 and all of the angles between those will fall in that region and that's the region I would shade okay right that's the three different types of locus you can have and also the three different uh, types of shading but you might be asked to be it looks super complicated this I'm going to take a while to write this down so Z is a member of the complex numbers that's what that means okay and then it says here z is less than or equal to two and um, this is looking like proper maths now z complex number z minus four six and I'm going to have to find a different line. Um, Z and the complex numbers. Arg. Okay. Um, right. Looks really complicated that. But let's just break it down into. Uh, into different bars, okay? So, I think I need to put one there, actually. So what this means is, um, again, it's looking really, if I showed my some of my younger years, they'd be very scared with this. But basically what it's asking for is you break it down separately. This is just notation. This first bit just means uh, it's a complex number. You can almost ignore that. Then let's look at the first section. So if we look at this, uh, this part here, um, well, that's just the circle, isn't it? And if we remind ourselves, that's exactly the same as what the circle was in question I. So that's basically meaning I. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. That is meaning, well, it's got to satisfy 
2 as well. So that's I, that's I, I. And then this is I, I, I. And basically this just means, this N means it's got to satisfy both I and I, I, which was that perpendicular bisector, and the half line. So all that is, is means it's got to satisfy all three points. Okay. So if I was to draw that on a um, argon diagram, I'm going to start off by drawing the circle, which was something like that, I think. It was 2, 2, with a radius of 2. I'm not going to draw, shade it in just yet, because I might not shade the right thing. Um, and that was 4, no, it's 4, 2, not 2, 2. 4, 2. Then the perpendicular bisector line was this one, and it was dotted, remember, passing through 5. And then the half line was at the point 2, 2, which will be here, because the radius is 2, 2, 2. It starts there, and it's going to go horizontally, and it's going to go up like that. Okay. Uh, and then we've got to shade the region that's true of all of them. Well, it's inside the circle, it's to the left of the dotted line, and it's in the, within the arc itself. So uh, that is the region that would satisfy that big complicated mess there. It's just meaning it's, it's what's satisfying all three of those um, inequalities. And hopefully you can see this. It now becomes quite easy to, to identify regions, which is lots of practical uses um, in, uh, in computing and linear programming. Um, this is a very quick and clever way of shading, re of identifying regions and allowable areas. Um, which, which you'll certainly does come up a lot in practical applications. Okay, um, right, well done with that. Um, that ends this topic. We're gonna do a bit of a review on that over the next couple of lessons. Um, but I want you to do exercise 2F now. And can you do questions two to six inclusive? If you finish early, plus if you're feeling brave, have a go at the challenge. Okay, uh, and then I'll see you next time, guys. Well done. Um, that's another chapter ticked off. Brilliant stuff.